we've just entered the Humboldt Museum here in Winnemucca. This is a fascinating place. This is obviously where some of the Lovelock Cave artifacts are kept, including some duck decoys, some evidence of Sarah Winnemucca Hopkins, who wrote about the Paiutes. We feature all this in our book, Giants on Record. And they used to have four skulls here and some bones which I've just found out have been repatriated about three years ago. So they weren't giant, they were quite big and robust and sort of more Cro-Magnon style, but they weren't giant. So I'm just about to go in, I'm just doing a little bit of talking out here before we head in, because this is really important, the fact that they had them on display here for a very long time. It's also in this area in Winnemucca where some very large skeletons were found, uh, up to recorded that over 11 feet tall in the early 1900s. This was before Lovelock Cave was um, discovered when they were digging out all the back guano and so on, and they found all these artifacts and mummified remains, some of them giants. But I wanted to check out what's in here because they have some of the original duck decoys showing that even, you know, potentially, even though they're only dated to 2700 BC, there's evidence here uh, through carbon dating going back to at least 10,000 corresponding with Spirit Cave Man. Okay, so this is the reason we're here. We're just checking out these duck decoys, this natural netting and stone artifacts and collection baskets. These all come from Lovelock Cave. Now we know how important this is when this was discovered in the early 1900s. It first got excavated after the guano miners realized there were huge amounts of artifacts in here. And here we have them. Also over here, we have a representation of Sarah Winnemucca Hopkins who wrote about before, you know, this was like 60 or more years before the caves were discovered and the red-haired giants were discovered. And she was actually, uh, in her book um, about the Paiute tribe, Life Among the Paiutes, she exclaimed they had battles with these red-haired beings, some tall, some really short, fair-skinned, red-haired, um, and they used to be cannibals. And then it became, and then when Lovelock Cave was excavated, they realized it wasn't just legend, it was actually a reality. And so let's have a close look at some of these and then we're gonna move on to some other museums. So these are the duck decoys, thousands of these were found, uh, made of tulle, which is another name for the giants, the Saitikau, basically the tulle eaters. And there is the net, which is original. Then we have a small white carved fish effigy here which I've not seen before. It's actually got some quite detailed carvings on it. Let's just get that in focus. It's actually got some quite detailed carvings on it, as you can see here. You can see like the kind of um, the scales and so forth. Here we have just some shells. This is like different kind of tools that were discovered. We have a small axe head. I'm sure there are very large ones found. These are the pine nuts, which this would be together, the pine nuts. We have, even have very, looks like very high quality obsidian, obsidian spear points, probably for fishing. These were found uh, near Rose Spring, the East Gate series, about 1000 AD. This is a duck call, so it actually mimic the voice of the duck. We have this effigy of a crayfish apparently, woven basket fragments, even at the back here, which I think is quite classic, an ancient stone pipe. So we know that they were smoking something. We have an effigy of a rat apparently, which is quite a strange thing to have an effigy of. Stone sinkers, obviously to just put weights down to catch fish and so forth, and uh, a beautiful um, quite large shell necklace. So there's quite a lot going on here in this display case. And it's well worth a look if you're here in Winnemucca. But it was actually in this area that very, very tall giants were found over 11 foot tall before the caves were excavated. So here's an image 
and a model of Sarah Winnemucca Hopkins. Now, she was never a chief. She lived between 1844 and 1891. And she was the daughter of Chief Winnemucca of the Paiute. Uh, well educated, she wrote a book that was published in 1883, My Life Among the Paiute, Their Wrongs and Claims. And they're about the encounters with the white man and also the red-haired giants. And she used to have this dress. This may be a representation of it. You see the red parts on the, the original dress was supposed to have bits or parts of the red hair from some of the mummies that were found in the area. Um, so I find this particularly interesting. She was also an activist and a kind of leader in different ways, but not an actual chief. Uh, here we have um, from 1911, the time Lovelock was being, Lovelock Cave was being uh, found, this kind of um, spear. This is the, the, the Fort McDermott Reservation, where they would have lived. And there's another image of it up there. So she was an absolutely fascinating lady. And again, they liked their pipes. And she was one of the most important people, really, when it comes to studying ancient giants, because she actually wrote about them before they were discovered. So behind me is a piece of a black tock mammoth, which lived around 20 or so thousand years ago and could have even been in existence at the same time the Winnemucca petroglyphs were being carved 14,800 years ago. Now this is incredible. So this does suggest that the megafauna and the giants were indeed living in the same area at the same time. And we have traditions of different tribes. They would herd mammoths like we herd cattle, about giant beavers that we feature obviously in Giants on Record. So the fact that we're finding mammoths in relatively recent times in the area in association with giants does back up the legends. And it's just amazing that these petroglyphs we're gonna look at were actually carved during the end of the era of uh, the megafauna. We're just outside Mars and Down Museum here in Lovelock, Nevada. And behind me is a quite a large sign you can see, and this is all about Lovelock Cave and the impact it has on this area. Now it's a few miles from here, it's much further south. Uh, it would have been next to Humboldt Lake. The lake and the reeds would have come right up to it. But here are some actual artifacts in this museum that came from this particular area. We know there are some pestle and mortar, some duck decoys, some stone pieces, some spearheads. So we're gonna go inside and take a look. But primarily we're here to hunt down the giants of uh, that threatened and concerned somewhat the Paiute tribe of this area. So we're just heading into the uh, native peoples of Humboldt sink room. And here you can see one of the classic duck decoys. This one supposedly dates to 2,200 years old. And this one is, on, is currently in the possession of the Smithsonian. And what we do have down here though, are these pestle and mortars. Now these, We've seen, as we researched in the book, there were some very large ones, extremely large. I mean, these are pretty damn big. And we've got the sandals here and other pieces. I want to have a quick look at these pestle and mortars. We have more examples along the floor here. And further ones here. Quite, these are quite, these are quite large. And you can see these all along here. They've just been put on the ground. Now these are oversized, these are not small. So it's fascinating that these are still here in the museum. This is one of the pieces, part of a pestle and mortar set. And look at the size of this. This is absolutely huge. And we have pieces like this. I mean, what is this? This is from Lovelock Cave. A smaller one of these, but still, even this is tough to, get, to hold while you're crushing your wheat and things. So this is like a reconstruction of Lovelock Cave. 
and how close it was to the lake about 2,000 years ago. And it was more of a marsh than a lake. So here we have the first display of the Lovelock culture. And you can see quite a few little artifacts, weights, and these are like for fishing and so forth. And these are quids, that's an interesting English term, wads of tough vegetable fiber. fiber. And uh, that have been extracted for chewing. And the roots apparently were chewed for food. And here's Lovelock Cave itself. More fishing lines, more artifacts. And again, we have these, a duck, oh, this is an original. A duck decoy head. So this is an original piece. So the duck decoy head made from the skin plus bill of the American coot or mud hen stretched over a grass filling. And it says in addition to the whole decoys recovered from Lovelock Cave cave and other sites in the area contain many remains of parts of decoys. There was more than is realized. There was even a campaign to try and collect them all some years ago. So here we have one of the sandals, which is made from tool, common plant of the marshes. And we have some smaller ones here, probably for a child or a young adult. These are sort of how they put it together. This is pretty big. It looks like my kind of size, size 10 or 11. Be interesting to see where the extremely large ones are. We have other examples of wickerware here, basketry, more examples here, and clothing. Very intricate, very, you know, very well done for its time, potentially several thousand years ago, or even several thousand BC. And if it, the dating of Winnemucca petroglyphs are correct, some of these could be over 10,000 to 15,000 years old. So this just gives a history of the research and dating. Most of the dates are about 2,000 or more, just slightly more years old. There's obsidian here, and there's um, a piece here which is dated to 2,160 BC. It just shows you the different levels when they found all these cache of duck keat decoys. L.L. Loud first excavated the cave in 1912, and the whole team, including Robert Heiser and his crew in 1969, and more skulls were actually discovered around this time. Um, and, you know, carried on researching for another 35 years, and there's more pieces here, all from the lake. And they were growing wild rice, pine nuts, chew stems of bulrush and so on and so forth. We have other pieces here, huge Indian pipe. We have this quite strange piece here. Just to get the size of it, you can see it's quite big, probably a foot wide. And it's got chippings on one side, so this could well have been used. Some kind of stone axe head. If it did, it was very big. We have more blades here. Some of these in this area, as you can see, the dating on these are 9,000 to 6,500 BC. So you can see the different styles here. These are the extremely ancient ones. They go back to that particular date. Some are broken, but they show you very high sophistication. They get newer and newer as we go up here towards 1000 AD. But the fact you've got ones here that date from 9,000 years ago does put it in context with Spirit Cave Man and many other dates that have been put forward by these. These are like knives for like extracting tool, wooden handles, olivella shell beads different beads that were used for trading, even a fire starter's kit and a shaped stone, stone discs as well. There's a lot going on here. And these are like pipe bowls that would have had a wooden piece or a, um, you know, a different type of tool stem attached to it. 
So I wonder what they were smoking. And these are like original pieces of the duck decoys. And these are from Humboldt Cave. And they're very similar to the Lovelock Cave ones. And these are the, from the Lowy Museum of Anthropology at the University of California in Berkeley. So we should go and check these out because these could be some of the giant ones which would have been on display. There were more caves. There's like Humboldt Cave. There's the Leonard Rock Shelter. There's all the sites around um, Humboldt Lake. There's uh, obviously Spirit Cave, Hidden Cave, and so on and so forth. So we know there's more. And so this whole area with this huge lake and all these tributaries were in existence um, would have been populated by native people going back 10,000 years. And it actually gives that date here. And this fits really well, but it still doesn't really explain the Winnemucca rock carvings, which are 14,800 years old, which are even older, you know, way before the first Clovis people, way before the first known people in North America. Thanks. So we're just entering a different room here. So we have more pestle and mortars here, mostly from Lovelock Cave. We even have a snake. It looks pretty dead though. But look, you can see how big these are. Just they're creating some pretty large pieces, potentially thousands of years old. And this is, these are donated by Vernon Stoker family. Uh, yes, I'm Bill Snodgrass, curator of Marsden House Museum. What have you seen yourself apart from what's in the museum? You mentioned something about uh, a possible skeleton. Uh, yeah, I've uh, seen some of the bones, uh, pictures mostly, because I'm an archeologist, so we get to a lot of access to that and things. I know that there's a lot of people who uh, have seen the one from Humboldt Museum in Winnemucca who uh, claim that that one's a giant one and put another jaw inside of it and such. And after doing my own measurements and such, uh, what we're actually looking at there is a human skull, but uh, do you know who Chuck Liddell is? He's a MMA fighter, massive guy, huge, you know, 300 plus pound heavyweight. And so he has these huge, he, he, he's like a stump in his neck. I mean. Not, not to offend him by any means, but he's got this massive neck from being a fighter. So what that does is it causes these extra amount of bone to develop to hold on to all that muscle. So that skull, while it is robust, which means large, it's not outside of human size. It's just whoever this guy was, was a massive muscle builder <laughs> for his age. Um, as far as anything else, though, it's all seemed pretty natural. Um, the Reed Reports, which was a collection of skeletons from around the area that got lost, and so we don't really know exactly where they came from other than his reports of saying, well, we found a skeleton here, we found a skeleton here. The tallest, I believe, came out to be about six foot two. Um, so pretty average for most people, but when you're looking at this area, your average back thousand years ago, maybe longer, was more around five, six, five, eight. So those skeletons, they've all kind of aged across a couple hundred years, but, um, and some of them are Shoshone and some of them are local Paiute, um, Southern Paiute. It's kind of hard to tell, you know, massive area of genetics um, and such, but uh, there was that small amount of variance that, you know, there was some that were from a different area just by checking that were taller and some that were shorter. So I know a lot of people go back to Sarah Winnemucca's statement about it. She said that there was giants here and really what she directly said was there was tall redheaded people that her people were at war with. They said that they were cannibals here. They did do, the, the Paiutes here did do fetal burials out in the flats, which is if you're all bundled up with your knees to your chest, sitting up, they just put you in a hole and bury you that way. Um, Lovelock Cave and of course further down Spirit Cave, um, burying people in caves was very rare. And you mentioned something about the translation of the name Saitika, which was potentially the name given yeah. to these, these red-haired cannibals. I'm trying to remember exactly the correct translation, it was either Thule Eaters or Thigh Eaters. Um, one belief, like I said, was that they were cannibals. Now, in American 
prehistory and stuff when uh, white man came over and was interviewing and uh, trying to determine names for villages and people. It was very common for one tribe to use their name for another tribe and that became the name that we know them by and so if the Saitaka was the term used by the Paiutes, we don't know if that's a derogatory term or if it was a friendly term. Um, as I was saying, like uh, with the term Eskimo, most people know that one. And that was a derogatory term by a neighboring tribe against the Inuit, because it meant raw meat eaters. So that's where we run into that question of, was it just they weren't on friendly terms, so they were cussing people out, or... <laughs> you really think that there were actual giants living in this area? I have heard a lot of stories and everything I have heard even from locals, the mummies that were brought out, they may have been tall, but they there was nothing to say they were giant. Um, and this is from word of mouth, from what even LL uh, Loud said in his work, uh, the mummies they weren't very much different. There was some wrong measurements taken, but you know those were corrected. But people are always like, "Oh, well, what? Why was why was uh, the original measurements done wrong?" And like I've said, archaeology was very young at that time, and measuring even measuring bones to determine height when you only had like a handful of them was still a very new science. So. I mean, there was one account, which we feature in our book, which was before Lovelock Cave was discovered. He just said it was in Winnemucca. They found an 11 foot two skeleton. And then it was later recalculated to be nine foot four. What do you make of that? I haven't seen it or heard about that one particularly. Um, I mean, I have heard from a family member that there was one time they were mining and this may have been word of mouth and not really happened to my family, I don't know. Because um, this is like my great grandparents kind of level thing, but they came across a pocket in the mountain that had a very large skeleton. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Uh, there have been rumors from people finding giants while doing, uh, putting through highways. Again, I haven't seen them. And I've gone through gray data because I have actually looked into researching this because, well, I'm here and people ask. And there's a picture of an artifact there. What is that? Uh, that is, I believe they called that a grasshopper artifact. Um, yes, carved wooden grasshopper. Uh, it's been painted black and the legs are red and the holes are filled with pitch. Um, and they said that it would probably have feathers coming off of it for the wings. So we've just come out of Marsden House Museum. We met Bill Snodgrass, an archeologist. Got some amazing information. And if you want to see some Lovelock cave artifacts, this is probably one of the best places you can see some. So we're just outside the old Nevada State Museum in Carson City, Nevada. And we're here because we know there are some Lovelock Cave artifacts and we've heard a rumor there might be some giant Lovelock Cave sandals as well as some other pieces that are of interest to our research. Uh, we've just arrived here and the first thing we saw in the Native American section is evidence of giants from Lovelock Cave. Now, We'll look in more detail at these, but what we're seeing here are extremely large sort of sandals, classic ones that are, we've seen other ones that were found in Lovelock Cave and the surrounding area. But these ones are absolutely massive. And to me, this is outrageous. I mean, the one on the left there is the equivalent shoe, US men's size 29 or EU size 67. I'm not sure the British size, I'll have to do some uh, checks on that. And basically, but someone who is seven foot one, a basketball player, a shoe size 22, and this is 29. So we're looking at someone over eight feet tall, probably eight and a half, maybe even nine feet tall, wearing this sandal. So this is absolutely insane. They call it Bigfoot. 
in the Great Basin. They've got the red hair giant here. So let's have a closer look at these and look at more details and see what's said on the board here. So the one on the right here was found at Winnemucca Lake, Thule Sandal. So made from the kind of reeds from the lake. The equivalent US men's shoe size for this is 10 and a half inches. And the sandal size is nine and a half, which is EU size 42. So that's 10 and a half inches long. The one in the middle here, this is from Lovelock Cave, and it shows the equivalent shoe size of just under 10 inches. So in men's size at size seven, EU size 39. But it's this one on the left here, which is really strange. There's only a fragment of it left. But this is insane. They call it extra large. Again, this is from Lovelock Cave. A tool sandal with a sole instep with light use wear, suggesting it was definitely worn. Plexiglass mount is from a tracing tracing. The plexiglass mount is from a tracing of a Washington State Sasquatch footprint. So that's not actually the footprint there, what we're seeing there, but the, the sandal itself does suggest someone of extreme height. It's 17 inches long, so it's a US men's shoe size of 29, EU size 67, so it's gonna be something like around 29 or 27 in England. So you can see some amazing artifacts in this cabinet here. These are from the Lovelock culture, so probably from Lovelock Cave and the surrounding area. But this pestle, we saw some in the Lovelock Museum that were quite big, but this one is 27 pounds in weight and 26 inches long. So this is easily the largest one I've seen. This could be the one that was photographed that we feature in our book Giants on Record, with the gentleman holding one up to the camera back in probably the 1950s. We also have here a duck decoy, which is quite a good example. It's a replica, a reconstruction, but based upon the ones that were found around Lovelock Cave. And then we have all these other artifacts here, which we'll show, we'll show you close up. They're amazing. These are like amulets, animals carved out of rock, potentially from 9,000 or more years ago. Or it, or it could be the classic Lovelock here, which I think is around 2000 BC. But you never know. These could be much, much older because this stone is impossible to date. But the fact that we're finding these artifacts here is incredible. We saw the giant sandals, we saw all the other things in the Lovelock and the Humboldt Museum. Now we're seeing these animal carvings in 3D, which are almost identical to those at Gebekli Tepe. I have to say this, they're almost identical. I'm gonna do some comparisons and show you how similar they are. And whether it was just a style that people picked up on and they just did naturally, whether it's a tradition that was passed between these cultures, could be a reality because we know that the Winnemucca, there's things there at the petroglyph site that look almost identical again to Gebekli Tepe. So lots to consider here, but let's get in close and have a look at some of these beautiful carved animal pieces. So this is vesic vesicular basalt, and you can see it's almost like, almost looks like some kind of Muppet, but actually this is some kind of animal figure. There's two here. We have this one here. This is actually carved out of wood, and it's a bear, apparently. Um, so that's pretty interesting. So this is another sort of reclining bear figure. You can see the head. You can see the body kind of going back. Very, very interesting indeed. Then we have some kind of what they call a metate with an animal head. And this is made of rhyolite. So this is the same kind of stone we find in different parts of the world, a very specific type of stone. Interestingly, the great pestle down there is also made of rhyolite, and rhyolite is the same kind of stone that some of the blue stones from Stonehenge is made of. This owl is uh, made of volcanic kind of basalt. This, they think, it would be a big horn sheep, they call it. But they're not sure, there's a question mark next to it. And behind are two frogs. And here is a rabbit. And we still see rabbits and hares running around all over the place. You can see the sort of shape of the ears going up on the front on the right there. And here we have a horned toad. I wonder what sort of toad that is. And of course, 
we have the classic duck decoy that was made from tule goose feathers dog bane red ochre and charcoal this particular one so whether the originals are made of all these materials i'm not sure but we know when we saw did see an original one i think in um lovelock museum it showed an actual dead duck being placed over this sort of foundation uh, within it but this pestle is just is good evidence that giants were existing at lovelock cave so this is a decorated lovelock wickerware burden basket made of willow it's pretty huge isn't it just the same way that we have another very ancient artifact here this is a plain weave mat which is made of tule and dogbane and is 9200 years old again it's from this area we have here what's called a catlo twinned tray twined tray again it's made from tule circa 8400 but also they were using these up until relatively modern times we also have a Folsom type point here, which is 10 to 11,000 years old. And we have some classic Clovis points, which are between 10 and 12,000 years old. And some stemmed points, which are between 7 and 11,000 years old. And it goes on here. We have 8,000 year old bag fragment, possibly made of bitter brush, circa 8,000 years amazing we have a twin fort rock type sandal which is 10,000 years old goodness gracious me this is incredible and again we have a better angle on the plain weave mat 9,200 years old if we go around here these crescents are seven to nine thousand years old this is incredible these are ten this, these beveled points are ten thousand three hundred and sixty years old or thereabouts so just behind me here we have a seventeen thousand year old imperial mammoth found in the uh the lake beds in this area so this is pretty impressive so even though it's seventeen thousand years ago we know they lived from before longer than that uh, way before that but also they died out around what 11 or 12 thousand years ago so they were around when the Winnemucca petroglyphs were being carved they were around when Lovelock Cave potentially was being inhabited and this whole area like Spirit Cave Man and so on were, were living so they were like in the same area so the fact we're finding evidence of giants in Nevada at Lovelock Cave with the giant sandals, giant pestle and all the research we've done in our book Giants on Record they may well have been working alongside or living alongside these great beasts, these megafauna and we know there are traditions by Vine Deloria that he pulled together from various elders who claim that the megafauna were herded, mammoths were herded like cattle and there were giant beav lake, lake beavers and things like this um, and these were recorded over and over again in these traditions so we know that the connection between the giant humans and the giant megafauna are real and they, they've been recorded in oral traditions. So just behind the mammoth here we have a very large Ice Age horse around 25,500 years old and amazingly this is from Pyramid Lake which is the site or very close to the Winnemucca petroglyphs so even though this was 10,000 potentially years young, older than the people who created the petroglyphs it's still quite an impressive beast so I'm just amazed that these are here on display this is like you know the first museum where there's actually potential admittance that giants really did exist in this area and so to see these is just amazing and it really backs up the whole idea of giants especially from Lovelock Cave and Winnemucca Lake being around in this area now obviously this one from Winnemucca Lake is only you know my kind of size um, six probably a six foot person this is someone who's probably nine feet or even more and that is an account of a nine foot skeleton being unearthed which we feature in the book mm -hmm.